First off in the world of sports at 155. In the American League, this is the schedule for today. Baltimore at Chicago. New York is at Boston at a game at 155 over WOKO. Washington and Minnesota. Cleveland at Kansas City. And Detroit is at Los Angeles. In the National League, Pittsburgh at Philadelphia. San Francisco at Cincinnati. Chicago at Milwaukee. And Los Angeles at St. Louis with cloudy weather there at 2.30 this afternoon. In other sports, Cincinnati stayed four games ahead of second place Los Angeles in the National League yesterday. The Reds defeated San Francisco 10-6, while the Dodgers down St. Louis 8-5. Milwaukee beat Chicago 6-3 in the first game of a doubleheader, shortened to six and a half innings by rain. The second game was postponed, and the other National League tilt of Philadelphia defeated Pittsburgh 5-4 in 16 innings. In American League action, New York tripped Boston 8-3, while Washington edged Minnesota 6-4 in the first game of a doubleheader, then lost the night cap 10-0. Cleveland down Kansas City 9-5, and Detroit beat Los Angeles by a score of 4-2. The Baltimore at Chicago game was called because of rain. We'll have more sports in just one moment. First, this word from Nationwide. Nine out of ten, come back again for Nationwide Car Insurance. If you drive a car, it's better by far. With Nationwide Car Insurance. Customers like what we stand for, they get much more than they plan for. Nine out of ten. Come back again for Nationwide Car Insurance. Hey, uh, what about number ten? I moved out of Nationwide Territory. Well, there's one big reason why nine out of ten to come back again for Nationwide Car Insurance. Nationwide's broad liberal coverage is the finest protection on the market today. Rates alone, you get a claim service that's fast, fair and friendly. For saving service satisfaction, see Nationwide. The Nationwide Car Insurance. Nine out of ten. Come back again for Nationwide Car Insurance. And continuing in the world of sports on warm-up time, we have this item of interest. John McCall was named president of the Milwaukee Braves yesterday. And taking the position, McCall becomes the youngest chief executive in Major League Baseball at 40 years of age. He has been general manager of the club since 1959. He replaces Joseph Kearns, who was promoted to vice chairman of the board with the club. McCall is the third president of the team since the Braves moved to Milwaukee in 1953. It has been only 13 years since McCall quit the playing field. Well, any combination of three Cincinnati wins or Los Angeles losses, and the Reds will have their first National League pennant in 21 years. Cincinnati ends closer yesterday with a 10-6 win over San Francisco to maintain a four-game lead over the Dodgers and to whip St. Louis 8-5. The Reds play their final home game today against the Yanks, or the Giants, rather, and then hit the road for a single game in Chicago on Tuesday and a three-game series out of Pittsburgh next weekend. The Dodgers have seven games left, one with the Cardinals and two weeks with Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and Chicago. The New York Yankees say they are sold out of box and reserve seat tickets for the World Series games at the Yankee Stadium. A Yankee spokesman says an overwhelming number of mail orders has been received in the last two days to exceed by many thousands the tickets available for public sale. The first two games are slated for the Yankee Stadium on October 4th and 5th. The 6th and 7th games, if necessary, are scheduled for the stadium on October 11th and the 12th. And finally, Milwaukee third baseman Eddie Matthews set a couple of National League home run records in the game against the Chicago Cubs yesterday. Matthews hit numbers 29 and 30 to extend his league record to nine consecutive years in which he has hit 30 or more home runs. Warm-up time was brought to you by Nationwide Insurance of Columbus, Ohio. Remember, for low-cost quality insurance for your life, health, home, car, property, or business, call your neighborhood Nationwide agent. He's listed in the yellow pages of your telephone directory. Quality Modern Radio, home of Yankee Baseball. Five minutes before two, we now pick up Yankee Baseball. You to another baseball game brought to you by the makers of Valentine Beer. Once again, Mel Allen, Red Barber, and Phil Rizzuto are at hand to bring you the play-by-play. Well, looks like they're all set to go down on the field, so let's us get set as the Atlantic Refining Company and your Atlantic dealer for the 26th straight year as baseball's largest continuous radio and TV sponsor brings you Yankee Baseball. Well, hope you're all set now for the ball game with plenty of the crisp refresher Valentine beer. See for yourself why over 5 million glasses of Valentine beer are enjoyed every day. We're all set now for the Yankee baseball game, so let's go down and pick up the starting lineup.
The batting order for New York, Bobby Richardson leading off second base, Tony Kubek shortstop, Roger Maris right field, Mickey Mantle center field, Yogi Berra left field, Elston Howard catching, Bill Scarron first base, Cleet Boyer third base, and Ralph Terry pitching. For the Red Sox, Chuck Schilling leads off second base. Gary Geiger, center field. Carl Yastrzemski, left field. Frank Malzone, third base. Jackie Jensen, right field. Pete Reynolds, first base. Jim Paglieroni, catching. Pumpsy Green, shortstop. And Bill Monbouquet, doing the pitching. The umpire is just now approaching home plate, along with Mike Higgins, the Red Sox skipper. Ralph Howe coming out of the Yankee dugout now. Will be Larry Knapp back to the plate. At first base, the new umpire just brought up by the American League, Bill Haller from the Pacific Coast League, 26 years old, from uh, Joliet, Illinois. Joliet. He will be at uh, first base. Johnny Stevens at second and. Harry Schwartz at third. Elsewhere today, in the American League, Cleveland will beat Kansas City, Detroit, Los Angeles, Washington, Minnesota, Baltimore, Chicago for a doubleheader. In the National League, Los Angeles at St. Louis, San Francisco, Cincinnati, Chicago, and Milwaukee. Pittsburgh and Philadelphia at the end of an inning. No score. Foss for Pittsburgh. Green for Philadelphia. Got a lot of new names this time of year with certain positions in the pennant race uh, set. And they're looking at some of the youngsters. Yesterday, the Yankees beat Boston 8-3. to Detroit beat Los Angeles 4-2. to Washington and Minnesota split. Washington win the opener, winning the opener 6-4. to Minnesota the second game 10-0. Pasquale pitched another shutout. Cleveland defeated Kansas City 9-5, and Baltimore, Chicago ringed out. In the National League, Cincinnati took another giant stride forward as they beat San Francisco 10-6, even while Los Angeles was beating St. Louis 8-5, leaving uh, Cincinnati four games out in front with only five games to play. Oh, wait a minute, that's not right. It's three games. In the lost column. Milwaukee beat uh, Chicago 6-3 to three in a game that was called after six and a half innings. They were scheduled to play a doubleheader. And Philadelphia beat uh, Pittsburgh 5-4 in a 16-inning game last night. The Red Sox take the field. Bobby Richardson approaches home plate. Belmont Bouquet moves out to the mound. The folks here at Fenway Park start to rise. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Bouquet 
with a record of 13 and 13 on the season. Shut out Baltimore in his last start, one to nothing. Quite sharp, pitching a three hitter. One and one against the Yankees this season, four and five lifetime. Mambo, as they like to call him uh, in this uh, area, is from Medford, Massachusetts. 25 years old. Was 14 and 11 last year. And 2 and 2 against New York. On the day that he's right, he's perhaps the best of the Red Sox pitchers, although Don Schwal, the rookie, has come along to compile a much more impressive record. Mambo beat the Yankees June 1st, 7 to 5, and lost to them 3 0 on July the 9th. Made another start against them on the 21st, was not involved in the final decision. Bobby Richardson leads off, batting 266. It's a cloudy day and a little foggy here in Boston. Right hander Bill Mon Bouquet. All set into the windup and the pitch. Bobby swings and fouls it back. Strike one. Now the delivery. Swung on. A ground ball hit the short. Pumpsy Green scoops it up. Throws on to first to Runnels in time. And there's one away. Tony Kubek steps in. Now the delivery. It's in there for a strike. Tony bluffing a bunt, batting 277. The next delivery swung on, hit foul, back to third out of play. balls, two strikes. And the pitch. Low and inside for a ball. One and two. Roger Maris on deck. Belmont Boot gets to the windup. The pitch swung on, fouled off at the plate. Ball spun out of the middle, Jim Paglieroni. <laughs> now the pitch, high and inside. Balls, two strikes. Here's the delivery. Tony swings, fouls another one off out of play back of third. This one bouncing up onto the roof. The Yankees will be home on Tuesday night with the Baltimore Orioles and Wednesday afternoon. The Red Sox next Friday night, Saturday and Sunday afternoon. The pitch. Swung on, bounced over the head of the pitcher. Pumpsy Green back to the bag, up with it, flips the first in time, and they're two away. Pumpsy Green doing a good job, and now here's Roger Maris. Batting 268. Stremski in left, Geiger in center, Jensen in right. 
Two away in the first inning. Mon Bouquet to the windup, and the pitch is low and inside. Kurt Ball. Ball one. Man on deck. Slow curve that is low and inside. Bouquet's next delivery. Swung on, hit foul on the ground, past first base. A 1-1 one, one count on Maris. He does a little landscape work in the batter's box and grins, talking to Pagliaroni and Larry Knapp. Raj makes a mark, by the way, and then rubs it out after he has swung to see how far... Stride took him on the previous pitch. Here's the delivery. It backs him up. Is up and around the shoulders. Two and one. A two-one count. Green is shaded just to the left of second of step. Here's the pitch. And it's high. Ball three, three and one. Three balls, one strike, two out. Raj has taken after swinging at some bad pitches in order to get a cut. Mumbo now behind three and one. Contemplates his next offering. Into the windup and the three one pitch. It's high, ball four, and Maris draws a walk. comes Mickey Mantle hitting 320. Long bouquet delivers and Mick swings fouls it back to the pier for a strike. Nothing at one. No balls, one strike. Maris getting his 92nd walk. And the pitch up high. Ball one, one and one. One ball, one strike. Approximately 32 of his walks have come since he's hit his 50th homer. You can read a lot into that. Next pitch swung on. There's the drive. Hit the deep right center. Jensen's going to get under it. And makes the catch. Mantle hit it a little bit down toward the handle. Got a good shot to deep right center. But not quite enough behind it. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on. At the end of the first half, the first inning, New York nothing. Boston coming to bat. Take along the six pack, jolly, jolly six pack. Take along the six pack, a funky Valentine. You'll have one pack of cheer, six cans of beer, so crisply refreshing any time. Valentine, Valentine, so nice. Valentine, just right. It's a crisp, refresher Valentine. Happy are the hands holding Valentine in hand. Take the jolly six pack. Jolly, jolly today. Next time, take along a six-pack, a jolly six-pack of Valentine beer. It carries with ease, cools in a breeze. And best of all, it gives you six icy cold cans of the crisp refresher. Take along a six-pack, jolly, jolly six-pack of ice-cold Valentine. Take along a
It's the last half of the first inning. Now coming up, Chuck Schilling. Gary Geiger on deck and Carl Yastrzemski to follow. Schilling batting 256. First pitch is in there for a strike. Now the delivery swung on to high pop along the right field line. Maris digging and Richardson, and it is Richardson making the catch and foul ground right in front of Raj. And I believe he stepped on uh, that he's in the barked his shins or something. I don't know if he spiked him or not. Rod is walking but bent over now as he stops. And now uh, Bobby's looking into the Yankee uh, dugout. I can't tell. Rod is sort of standing around and uh, Richardson talking to him so I don't know whether he's all right. Now he's walking away. Geiger, left-hand batter. Ralph Terry's pitch is in there for a strike. Ralph, with a record of 15 and three on the season, one and one against the Red Sox. The right-hander's pitch, the left-hand batter swings, bounces it toward second. Nice big hop to Richardson, breaking goes left to throw to first in time, and they're two away. Now coming up is Carl Yastrzemski. The lad from Long Island batting 268, 11 homers, 79 runs batted in. First pitch is low, ball one. Next pitch is in there for a strike, one and one. Now the next delivery is in there for a strike, one and two. Two count. Malzone to follow. And the delivery. Swung on and fouled off out of play to the left of the plate. One ball, two strikes. Time is asked for by Yastrzemski and granted by Larry Knapp. Carl has good power to the opposite field and has been learning to pull the ball a little better, too, as the season has worn along. The next pitch is swung on. He pulls that one deep to right center, and that ball is going to be caught by Mantle right at the barrier, just to the left of the Red Sox bullpen. He pulled that one. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. End of the first inning. 
The Yankees nothing and the Red Sox nothing. The Yankees will be home on uh, Tuesday night with the Baltimore Orioles. There will be a brief ceremony before the ball game. Sponsored by the National Conference of Christians and Jews. They're holding a brotherhood baseball night. And prior to the game, the National Conference of Christians and Jews will honor two ball players and two writers for their outstanding work in the field of brotherhood and human relations. Then uh, the Orioles are there Wednesday afternoon. The Red Sox come in next Friday night, Saturday and Sunday afternoons to close out the season. Tickets available at the Yankee Stadium Advanced Ticket Window at the Midtown uh, Ticket Office, Grand Central Terminal. And at the 12 uh, Weber Havana stores in the greater New York area. Yogi Berra leading off in the first half of the second inning. Hitting 273. Bill Mombouquet's delivery in there. Strike one. Nothing in one. No score, second inning. The right-hander's next pitch is outside. A 1-1 one, one count. And the 1-1 one, one pitch. Yogi swings on it, fouls it off upstairs. Strike two, one and two. One ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch on the way. Yogi lines it to second. Schilling takes it. One away. Schilling has been a tremendous performer in his rookie year. Tying the Major League record. He's had just seven errors this season. Tying Jackie Robinson for the Major League record. And only one of his errors has been on a ground ball. The others on dropped liners or thrown uh, balls. Elston Howard, who himself has had a sensational year, takes low outside for a ball, hitting 360. No score. It's the first of the second. Mombu catch delivery. Swung on and missed. A 1-1 one, one count. The 1-1 one, one pitch to Ellie. Low and away. Ball 2-2-1. Two, two Two balls, one strike. Now the delivery. Swung on line over short into left center for a base hit. And by his beautiful pickup by Yastrzemski to hold him to a single. That ball was almost by him as he was racing over in the left center, and he came up for the ball. And Howard is held to a single. Up comes Bill Scarron, batting 270. Johnny Pesky was here yesterday, and we were chatting. And Yogi made a play like that. How important it is for outfielders to make that cutoff. Scarron swings and misses, strike one. That keeps a man away from scoring position. Also, uh, keeps uh, alive the potential ground ball double play situation. You'd be amazed the number of outfielders that don't make it. Now the delivery. And it bounces away from the catchers into the dirt, and Howard goes to second. 
The wild pitch. Charged to Bill Mombuquet. Pagliaroni goes out to talk to Bill. Switching their sign pattern with a runner now on second. To reduce the possibility of Howard picking it up and relaying it to the hitter. One ball, one strike. One out, one on, no score in the second inning. The man from Edford, batting Bill Mombuquet, gets the sign from Jim Paglioni. And then Scowron uh, asked Larry Knapp for time granted. Now we're ready to continue. Here's the pitch. Look out high and tight. Ball two, two and one. Two balls, one strike. Mon Bouquet delivers and Moose swings, fouls it back out of play. A 2-2 two -two count. Two balls, two strikes, one out, one on. Mon Bouquet takes no time mopping his brow. Now the stretch by the right hander, the pitch to Scarron, swung on and fouled off as he pitched him in type and let up on the speed of the pitch. Count holds it 2-2. Two -two. Once again, the right hander to the stretch and the pitch to Moose and the curve outside. Ball three. You had Moose pulling away from the plate. The ball is aimed at him but broke too quickly and dipped low. Full count. Moyer on deck. Ready for the 3-2 pitch. Here it is. Swung on and hit on the ground. Up with it is... Malzone, the throw to first in time. Howard holds second. It was a low liner trapped by Malzone. He played hot potato with it a little while. And then fired on to first to get Scarron. Two away. And up comes Cleet Boyer, hitting 229. No score, second inning. Here's the pitch to Cleet. Curve ball over. Strike one. Nothing in one. Now the next pitch. High and away. Ball one. One and one. The day is somewhat humid, not uh, terribly so, just a little, but apparently it's uh, quite humid for Bill. He keeps mopping his brow out there. It's a cloudy uh, day, and somewhat foggy. Mon Bouquet sets, delivers, and Boyer swings, fouls it off up onto the roof just above the press box. A one-two count. Despite his 229 batting average, Boyer's driven in 56 runs. Mon Bouquet ready, delivers, and Boyer takes it outside. 2-2. Two Almost had him lunging for the breaking pitch. Now 
Now the 2-2 delivery. Swung on, to fly ball. Hit in the straightaway center. Gary Geiger moves under it, waiting, and takes it. Retiring the side. No runs, one hit. No errors, one left on. Ten of an inning and a half. New York, nothing. And Boston, nothing. In the last half of the second inning, Frank Malzone, Jackie Jensen, Pete Runnels will be coming up. And we hope that you've got some Valentine beer coming up there at home. We hope you remember to take some six-packs along with you when you went shopping. Valentine beer goes over big with people bent on fun and pleasure. After all, pleasure is the purpose of the crisp refresher. Your very first swallow and each one to follow tells you that this is the beer you've been thirsting for. Today's Valentine is light and crisp and golden. The light beer with true lager flavor. All of which explains why more than five million glasses of Valentine beer are enjoyed every day. How about making sure that you put right at the top of your shopping list pleasure pack six packs of the crisp fresh. You don't have to write all that out. Just put down Valentine beer. Remember the rest of it. Oh, and by the way, while you're pouring Valentine, don't be completely unselfish. Take care of old number one. We pause for station identification. At 1460 on the radio dial, you're in tune with Quality Modern. W-O-K-O, Albany, New York. Good sound broadcasting for 1961. The time, 29 minutes past 2 p.m. Half the second inning. Frank Malzone leads off for the Red Sox. The boy who... Uh, Got his start in the Bronx, a native of that area. Hitting 264, has 85 runs batted in. Right-hand batter takes a curve from Ralph Terry, strike one. Nothing and one, the count. And the delivery. Swung on, a ground ball hit back to the middle. Kubek goes over, can't, he's up with it, but he can't make a throw. And so it's a base hit for Malzone, deep in behind second. Leading off in the last of the second for the Red Sox. That allows Jackie Jensen to come up with a runner on first and nobody out. Talk about people that could write books, he could write one. And I'm not talking about this thing out of baseball last year. Or any of those problems, but a fellow who uh, has had the rare privilege of appearing in an all star major league game, a World Series, a Rose Bowl game. Here's the delivery, low outside. And the East West football game. You don't get many to do that. And an All America fullback at Cal. Here's the pitch to Jackie. Check, swing, foul, back of first out of play. One and one. One ball, one strike. Malzone leads off first, nobody out. Ralph Terry's pitch, there goes the runner. His pitch is swung on and ripped back foul. Up the screen. Count remains one and two. One ball, two strikes. Ralph Terry delivers and Jensen swings and drives one to deep right center. Mantle digging hard, goes over and corrals it. And Malzone has to hasten back to first base. Jensen hits a high liner to right center. One away. Now Pete Runnels hitting 320. Batting champion of the American League last year. Left-hand batter, and the pitch, outside, ball one. Check 
Ted Williams nosed him out for that title in 58. Here's the pitch, and it's down into the dirt. Throw down to first runner's back. Williams nosed him out on the last day in 1958, and he came back to win it last year. Get a little uh, cloudier or foggier or something. Throw to first runner's back. Next delivery, swung on. There's a high fly in the deep center. Mantle goes back toward the flagpole. Still going back, makes the catch. And again, Malzone sprints back to first base. Two away. Mick had to get that at the flagpole. Yogi hollering something over to him, grinning. Now Jim Paglieroni batting 240. Big, strong fellow. No score, second inning. The delivery swung on, foul back out of play. Nothing in one to count on Pagliaroni. Pumpsy Green on deck. Frank Malzone on first. Outfield around to the left. Ralph Terry's pitch is a curveball over. Beautifully. Strike two. Nothing in two. And the next delivery, curve is lined deep to left field, and that ball is foul up against the screen. Not all the way, but foul. Again, Malzone has to go back first. This time he walked. Pagliaroni just missing a homer by about five feet. Two strike count on the catcher. Ralph Terry sets, delivers, swung on it, missed. Strike three, fired a fastball by him. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left on. At the end of two innings of play, the Yankees, no runs, one hit, no errors, two left on. The Red Sox, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on. Nothing to report in the American League except the batteries for the first game, Baltimore, Chicago, Barber against Horland, H-O-R-L-E-N, a new White Sox uh, pitcher. And in the National League, Los Angeles, St. Louis, the game starts have been delayed because of rain. San Francisco at Cincinnati, it's Sanford against Jay. Chicago, Milwaukee later. Philadelphia leads Pittsburgh 2-1, to one, 10 to three and a half innings. Green against Foss. Dal Rimple homeward in the second for Philadelphia. In the first half of the third, Ralph Terry will be coming up for New York, followed by Bobby Richardson and Tony Kubek. The Yankees' last visit of the season to Fenway, but... Red Sox have three with New York next weekend, next Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday. Here's the pitch to Terry. Swings and grounds it foul down the first baseline. Ralph's not a bad hitting pitcher. Mombouquet all set, delivers, and Terry swings, lifts another foul beyond first out of play. Ralph hitting 238 on the season, had 15 hits, driven in five runs. Bill Mombouquet's next pitch. It's a ball, it hits the plate and bounces off to the left. The ninth meeting, of course, up here. The Yankees have won five, the Red Sox three. 
Yankees have taken five out of six in New York. Now the pitch, and Terry swings and pops it up to first. Pete Ronald's waiting for it, and has it. One down, and up comes Bobby Richardson, grounded to short in the first inning. We have learned today, which we did not know yesterday, that the Yankees uh, paid attendance as a new major league record, 1,915,490 for the road. The delivery is over the outside corner for a strike. That's a, a road record. A major league road attendance record for one a team playing before 1,915,490. Pitch low outside. Of course, that will be increased today by roughly some 25,000 or so. Maybe a little bit more, maybe 30. One ball, one strike. The pitch to Bobby. Swung on, lined out to short. Humpsy Green goes over, breaking to his left. The reason I sort of held back, the ball was hit uh, through the middle, but didn't have too much steam behind it. Green raced over and was able to get to the ball behind second base and make the catch. Two down, the batter, Tony Kubek. Grounded to short in the first inning, batting 276. Mombu gets delivery in there, strike one. Yanks and Red Sox scoreless. It's the third inning. Now the pitch swung on. There's a high drive in the right center. And it's going to be taken by Gary Geiger in front of Jackie Jensen to retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. At the end of two and a half innings of play, New York nothing and Boston nothing. A beer must be icily light. The crisp refresher is icily light. With true lager flavor, precisely right. The crisp refresher, precisely right. Lively golden, crystally clear. The crisp refresher, crisp refresher. Valentine, Valentine beer. With your first swallow and everyone to follow, today's Valentine delivers a sunny, mellow taste that really refreshes. Since people know quality when they taste it, over five million glasses of Valentine beer are enjoyed every day. So clap your hands, tap your feet, snap your fingers, and that's the man for Valentine. The crisp refresher. Valentine, Valentine beer. Since 1840. It's the last half of the third inning. No score. And here is Pumpsy Green up, switch hitter, batting left handed against Ralph Terry, whose pitch is in there. Strike one. Nothing and one the count. Green batting 263, swings the next pitch and lifts a high fly ball into medium right field. Maris moving 100, makes the catch and is one away. Now coming to bat will be Bill Monbouquet with nine hits and 64 trips. Terry's delivery. 
swung on. Little tap to the mound. Terry has on one hop, throws on over to Scarron, and Mombuquet is retired. And they're two away. Pitch to Schilling. Outside for a ball. One ball, no strikes. Next pitch is in there for a strike. One and one. Next delivery, swung on, a bouncer toward third, two hops. Boyer fires on the first in time, and the side is retired. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. And so at the end of three innings, the scoreless game, each team with one hit. The Yankees are left two on, and the Red Sox won. Friends, the next time you shop, make the stop at the Jolly Six Pack Display and take along a six pack of Valentine beer. Each six-pack carries with ease, cools in a breeze. And best of all, gives you six frosty cans of the one and only crisp refresher. Nothing, uh, yes, we have Baltimore. Two runs in the first inning, the first game against Chicago. Barber and Horland, White Sox batting. And in the National League, Kopax and Gibson, Los Angeles, St. Louis, they're going to get started. San Francisco won, Cincinnati batting in the first inning, Sanford and Jay. Chicago, Milwaukee, no report. Philadelphia, two, Pittsburgh, one end of four. Green and Foss, Dalrymple, Homer, in the second. They're turning the lights on here now. That's how dark it's getting. Remember, the Yankees will be home Tuesday night. Brotherhood night, sponsored by the National Conference of Christians and Jews, honoring two ball players and two writers for their brotherhood work. And a brief ceremony for the game. Phil Rizzuto is coming over to sit in with you for the rest of the afternoon as we move over now to the television side. Nice visiting with you. And a nice guy coming on to take you the rest of the way. Roger Maris swings and pops one up to short center field. Gary Geiger coming in. Takes it for the out. So Maris goes down on a soft fly to short center field. And the lights are on here at Fenway Park. Brings up Mickey Mantle, who flying to right field in the first inning. No score here on the top of the fourth. Pitch to Mickey. Checks his swing, but it's a strike. Started the swing. Held up. Foul back up over the roof and out of play. Nothing in two on Mick. Ron Boquette has changed his wind-up delivery, we see. He's taking the short, what they call no wind-up delivery. He holds the ball in front of him and just brings it about head high and pitches. It's high for ball one. One ball, two strikes. Curve is... Just outside, ball two. Should have seen the surprised look on Mon Bouquet's face when Larry Knapp called out a ball. Two and two the count. Here's the windup. Fastball swung it and missed strike three. Mantle goes down swinging. First strikeout for Mon Bouquet. Two away and it brings up Yogi, who lined to second base in the second inning.
Wind up pitch to Yogi is high ball one. On deck is Elston Howard. Each team with one base hit. Howard has the hit for the Yankees and Mal zone for the Red Sox. Change up is over. Strike one, one on one. Here's the one one pitch. The curve way outside. Ball two. Two and one. When Mon Bouquet makes a bad pitch, he doesn't even look at the catcher. He walks around the mound, takes his cap off. So Kyle Aroni must be ready. He won't throw the ball back when Mon Bouquet's not looking. He's been working very slow this ball game. Curve is outside. Three and one. Here's a 3-1 pitch, a foul off the team. Full count on Yog. All right, ready for the payoff pitch. Here it is, it's a curve and it's low ball four. Second walk given up by Mon Boquette. Brings up Elston Howe to line the single to left center field in the second inning. Pete Reynolds holding first against Yogi. Right hand is set. Pitch to Howard. Hit high in the air to deep center field. Geiger is moving back. Back and under it and makes the catch in the deepest part of center field. For the Yankees in the top of the fourth, no runs, no hits, no Red Sox. There is one man left at the end of three and a half. It's the Yankees nothing and the Red Sox nothing. Hey, come on, six pack. Jolly, jolly, six pack. Next time, take along a six-pack, a jolly six-pack of Valentine beer. It carries with ease, cools in a breeze. And best of all, it gives you six icy cold cans of the crisp refresher. Take along a six-pack, jolly, jolly six-pack of ice cold Valentine beer. In the bottom of the fourth inning in this scoreless ball game for the Red Sox, it'll be Geiger, Yastrzemski, and Malzone to face Ralph Terry. Yankees now have Hector Lopez in left field. Mickey Mantle in center, Maris in right, Boyer at third, Demestri at short, Gardner at second, and Scarron at first. Howard catching and Terry pitching. Gary Geiger bounced to the second baseman in the first inning. Billy Herman coaching at third. Rudy York down at first. Terry's pitch to Geiger is a swing and a miss. Strike one out of change of pace. For both pitches today, using the no wind-up delivery, Terry and Mon Bouquet. Fastball line to right field. There's a base hit. Maybe extra bases. Maris to his left. He's up with it. And holds Geiger to a long single. Nice fielding by Roger Maris. Held Geiger to a long single. Brings up Carl Yastrzemski. 
who fly deep to center field in the first inning. Yastrzemski, a left-hand hitter. Geiger leads away. The pitch to Yastrzemski. Ground ball to first. Gowron goes to second base for one. Back to first. Double play. A nice play by the Moose. He had two choices. He could have stepped on the bag and thrown to second. But he threw to Demestri, who threw back to Scar and got the double play. Moose was only about a step away from first. Two out. And here's Malzone, who singled in the second inning. Three Yankee double plays yesterday helped Whitey Ford win his 25th ball game of the year. The curve is over to Malzone, strike one. The Yankees lead the major leagues in double plays with 177. That was their 177th of the year. Fastball just outside, one and one. One one curve is popped in the air to buzz Billy Gardner, the second baseman, moving back on the outfield grass under it, and Gardner takes it. So for the Red Sox in the bottom of the fourth, no runs, one hit, no Yankee errors, nobody left. And at the end of four, it's still the Yankees nothing and the Red Sox nothing. And now Fred. Now this is Bob Delaney, and we're on the go again with the rest of the ball game brought to you by the Atlantic Refining Company and your neighborhood Atlantic dealer. The folks who keep your car on the go. Board. Cleveland at Kansas City, Detroit at Los Angeles, Washington at Minnesota has not started. Baltimore at Chicago for a pair. At the end of one half inning, the Orioles two and the White Sox batting Barber against Harlan. Los Angeles at St. Louis, Arena stopped at Colfax against Gibson. San Francisco at Cincinnati tied 1-1 one -one at the end of one. Sanford against Jay. Chicago at Milwaukee has not started. And Pittsburgh at Philadelphia, the Phillies lead 2-1 at the end of five. Foss against Green, Dalrymple, home it in the second for the Phillies. Last night, the Phillies and the Pirates played 16 innings. The Phillies finally beating them 5-4. It was the longest game of the year in the National League. The magic number for the Cincinnati Reds is down to three now. They won, and the Dodgers won yesterday. All right, here's the Moose who bounced to third base in the second inning. Bill Monboquette on the mound for the Red Sox. Pitch to Scar and high and tight ball one. Drives him back away from the plate. Side arm curve hit deep to left. That one's gone way back. That might be over the screen. And nope, it hits the screen and rolls back down on the field. Bill Scarin gets his 28th home run of the year to give the Yankees a 1-0 lead. That's only the second hit off Mon Boquette. The Moose gets his 28th, which is the most he's ever hit in any one year with the Yankees. He had 26 in 1960. Here's Cleet Boyer, fly to center field in the second inning. Pitch to Boyer, fouled and coming back out of play in the crowd. Oh, a fan got both hands on and popped right out. I'd like to see them hit a foul ball over by the president of the American League box, Joe Cronin, who's here today. See if he's still got those good hands. Boyer takes the curve over, strike two.
Fastball outside, ball one. One ball, two strikes, that's a curve. Outside, ball two, two and two. That was the Yankees' 236th homer of the year. Each time they hit a homer, they increase their own major league record for homers in one year. Brown ball at second base. Schilling comes in. Up with it. Over to Runnels. That's one away. One out, it brings up Ralph Cherry, who popped to first base in the third inning. Hasn't had a bad year batting. 15 for 64 this year. Here's the pitch to Ralph. Curve low, ball one. Fastball fouled in back of the plate. One and one. Curve line to left, but foul back into the seats. One ball, two strikes. Sidearm curve is over. Strike three, call. Perry's out of there. The second strikeout for Monbouquet. Brings up Billy Gardner taking over for Bobby Richardson. Gardner batting 229. 15 doubles, two homers, 13 runs batted in. Pitch to Gardner, low and away, ball one. Two out, nobody on. The Yankees leading one nothing in the top of the fifth. Yankees' last appearance here at Fenway Park, their last road trip of the year before the World Series starts. Fastball high, two and nothing. Two-nothing pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike one of the high fastball. Joe DeMastri on deck. Joe took over for Tony Kubek last inning. A 2-1 pitch. A ground ball over the pitcher's head. Green's got a hustle. He's up with it. Throws off balance. And the throw is wide and Gardner beats it out. Green had to get the ball to his right and throw off balance. It's a base hit for Billy Gardner. An infield single. Brings up Joe DeMastri. Joe has only been about 32 times. Six hits, two RBIs, batting 188. No extra base hit. Two out. Runnels holding first against Gardner. Stretched by Mon Bouquet. His pitch is inside ball one. On deck, Roger Maris. Gardner leads away. Fastball is over. Strike one, one and one. The one, one pitch. High. Ball two, two and one. On both stretches. 
Fastball swung it and missed strike two, two and two. Monbuk had checked the time. Here's a stretch. Fastball foul back off the screen. Picked up by the Yankee bat boy, Frank Prudenti. Inside, full count, three and two, and with two out, Gardner will be off with the pitch. <laughs> Quick throw to first, Billy's back. Dan Monbo says, the runner goes, the pitch is strike three, swinging. Foul tipped it. Pagley Roney held on to it. Third strikeout for Mon Buquette. For the Yankees, one run on two hits. No Red Sox there is one man left. At the end of four and a half, it's the Yankees one and the Red Sox nothing. Sunglasses, road maps, a stick of chewing gum, one glove, flashlight, three jelly beans. Sally, why clean the glove compartment now when we're on our vacation? Well, you're always talking about how important it is to keep the running parts of the car clean, like the clutch and the carburetor, and I thought... No, the clutch was on our old car, but the carburetor is important. A broken comb, a mirror... You see, if the carburetor is dirty, the car stalls, idles roughly, uses more gasoline. Remember how it was before we started using Atlantic Imperial? An old lipstick, two, three packs of matches. Atlantic Imperial does everything a fine gasoline should do, and more. It cleans your carburetor as you drive and keeps it clean. Oh, there. Anyway, dear, next time you buy gasoline, make sure it's Atlantic Imperial. Atlantic Imperial? The gasoline that cleans carburetors and keeps them clean? <laughs> I wouldn't use anything else. Here, Tom, put this stuff in your pocket. Sox, it'll be Jackie Jensen to lead off. Jensen line deep to center field in the second inning. Red Sox trail 1 0. Ralph Terry going for the Yankees. Curve to Jensen, low outside, ball one. Terry comes back with a fastball, pop foul coming back up on the roof out of play. One and one on Jackie. Pete Runnels on deck. Here's Terry's 1-1 one, one pitch. A curve high and away. Ball two. <laughs> now the 2-1 delivery. Foul. Again back up on the roof out of play. Two and two the count. All right, Terry ready. Side arm curve outside. Full count on Jensen. Three and two.
Ready now for the payoff pitch. Here it is, and it's hit on the ground in the hole. Boyer was left up with it. Throw to first. In time for the out. That Boyer went over to shortstop to cut off that ball and throw Jensen out. One away, here's Pete Runnels. Fly deep to center field in the second inning. Pete batting 319. Left-hand hitter. One out, nobody on. Curve to Runnels over. Strike one call. Larry Knapp calling balls and strikes. Change up hit back to Terry. Ralph has it on one hop. Flips to Scar and it's two away. It's a nice pitch by Terry. It had Runnels off stride. Couldn't get too much power on the ball. Here's Pat Leroni who struck out in the second inning. On deck, Pumpsy Green. Terry's pitch is right in there. Strike one call. Curve ball hit high in the air. The shortstop Demestri is moving under it. Joe takes it for the third out. So Terry sets the Red Sox down in order again here in the bottom of the fifth. Nothing across. At the end of five... It's the Yankees' one run on three hits, no errors. The Red Sox, no runs, two hits, and no errors. On the scoreboard, the only other game in the American League underway right now, Baltimore at Chicago. The White Sox came up with five in the bottom of the first off. Steve Barber and lead five to two. Barber against Horland. In the National League, the Dodgers failed to score on the top of the first. The Cardinals are batting. Colfax against Gibson. Giants won. Cincinnati won at the end of an inning and a half. Stanford against Jay. Chicago at Milwaukee has not started. And the Phillies lead the Pirates 2-1 at the end of five. Fought for the Pirates. Green started short in the sixth for the Phillies. Dow Rimple, Holman in the second. With nobody on for Philadelphia. Well, the Yankees will be home to face the Baltimore Orioles Tuesday night. And Wednesday afternoon, the last ladies' day of the season. And then the Red Sox come into town to finish the season against New York Friday night, Saturday and Sunday afternoon. Good seats are available. And you might be at the ball game in which Roger Maris hits either number 60 or 61. The ground crew... Moving out the infield on their little motor scooters. Johnny Blanchard is running in from the Yankee bullpen. We might have a pinch hitter or a little change in lineup here. For the Yankees, it'll be Maris, Mantle, and Lopez. Roger Maris has walked and flied to center. New York won Boston nothing in the top of the sixth. Ron Boquette ready to pitch to Maris. Here's a short windup. Curve low, ball one. Change up high and away, ball two, two and nothing. And the fans start booing. Anytime the pitcher gets behind Maris or Mantle, they get on him. The 2 nothing pitch, a curved line to right field, foul. Two balls, one strike. Two-one pitch. In there, strike two call. Two and two. Now 
another 2-2 pitch. A curve foul just below it. Still 2-2 two and two on Roger. Again, the 2-2 pitch. Fastball, top foul down the left field line, but going back into the stands. Tex Clevenger is up in the Yankee bullpen. Still 2-2 two and two on Maris. Here's the windup. Foul over towards the Red Sox dugout. Maris out in front of a change of pace pitch. All right, here's the windup. Pitch outside. It's a full count, three and two. Pitches are really working on Maris and Mantle. And none of them want to go in the record book as having been the one to throw the 60th home run ball. The payoff pitch. A base hit to right field. He got good wood on it but couldn't lift it. A line drive single for Roger Maris. That's the fourth hit off Monbo, and here's Mickey Mantle. Mickey fly to right and struck out. Larry Knapp taking a look at the ball. On deck is Hector Lopez. Nobody out. Yankees lead 1-0. Top of the six. Maris at first. Pete Runnels holding him close to the bag. Here's the stretch. Pitch to Mickey. A drive deep to right field. Jensen going back. He makes a beautiful one-handed catch. And a throw back to first. Not in time to get Maris. A fine play by Jackie Jensen. It would not have been a home run. Though it was hit right on the nose. Jackie didn't have much time to get back to the wall, caught it one-handed going away from home plate. And Maris hustled back to first. Here's Hector Lopez, lined the first time at bat. Batting in Yogi's spot. Yogi had lined the second and walked. Pitch to Hector. Curve, swing and a miss, strike one. Lopez batting 216, five doubles, two triples, three homers, and 20 runs batted in. On deck, Elston Howard. Maris leading off first. Fastball swung in and missed strike two. Nothing in two. Again, the stretch. High this time, ball one. Ready for the one ball, two strike pitch. It's a curve, low and away, two and two. Clevenger still throwing in the Yankee bullpen. Here's the stretch. The 2-2 pitch. Curve hit on the ground is short. Green bobbles it. Throws the second not in time. And that'll be an error charge to Pumpsy Green. Too anxious to get rid of the ball. He had a perfect double play ball and tried to throw it before he got it. 
Here's Elston Howard, single and fly to center. Ellie batting 361. at second, Lopez at first. Pitch to Howard. Strike on the outside corner. Fastball outside. One and one. Bouquet taking a long time getting the sign. Now he's ready. His pitch is swinging a miss. Strike two and after a high fastball. to Howard. Strike on the outside corner. Larry Knapp, when he calls that strike, lifts his right leg high in the air. Four strikeouts for Mon Bouquet and brings up the Moose, who bounced to third and home it deep in the left field screen. Yankees won. Red Sox nothing here in the top of the sixth inning. All right, here's the stretch by Mon Bouquet. Runners lead off first and second. High pop-up back at third. Malzone moving under it. He's got the room and makes the catch in foul territory. So for the Yankees in the top of the six, no runs, one hit, one Red Sox error, two men left at the end of five and a half. The Yankees won and the Red Sox nothing. What does a truck driver think about as he drives? You know, this is a pretty good life. New sights to see all the time. Yeah, when you get back home after a long trip, they're waiting for you. Your own car, all ready to go. Okay, lady, be my guest. But gosh, I'm glad that car of mine is running right again. Boy, remember how rough it used to idle? The way it stalled? That was a great day when Harry told me about Atlantic Imperial. The gasoline that cleans your carburetor as you drive. Yeah, and keeps it clean. Now my little buggy drives like a dream. Roger Maris moves to center field, and Johnny Blanchard moves out to right field. Mickey Mantle's out of the lineup. Blanchard will be batting in Mantle's spot in the batting order. So the Yankees have Lopez, Maris, and Blanchard in the outfield. Boyer, Demestri, Gardner, and Scourin in the infield. Howard still catching, and Kerry still pitching. And for the Red Sox, Pumpsy Green, who fly to right, leads off. Lights have been on here at Fenway Park since the second inning. Terry's first pitch to Green is low ball one. Humphrey is a switch hitter. Slow curve over strike called one and one. Clevenger is still up in the Yankee bullpen. One-one pitch, swing and a miss, strike two. Darren broke in from first base. He thought that was strike three that time. Fellas on the Red Sox bench getting on him. There's a changeup hit over Terry's head. Gardner coming in, up and on the big hop, throws to Scour and one out. And that'll bring up Mon Bouquet, who hit back to the box in the third inning. Nobody 
Philly on. New York one. Boston nothing here. Playing the bottom of the sixth inning. This is swing and a miss at a fastball. Strike one. Curve low outside. One and one. Swing and a miss at a curve. Strike two. One ball, two strikes. Deck Chuck Schilling. Perry's next pitch. Outside, two and two. Now Louis Arroyo is up in the Yankee bullpen. Here's the two-two pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Perry gets the second strike out of the ball game. Brings up Chuck Schilling, pop to second, bounce to third. Two out, nobody on. The Yankees lead one nothing. On deck, Gary Geiger. Man, it's getting darker up here. There's a bunt push down past the pitcher. That's, it's a base hit, a beautiful push bunt. Terry couldn't get it. Scarlin got it. He threw to Terry, but Terry had not reached first base. It's a bunt single for Chuck Schilling. The third hit off Ralph Terry, and it brings up Gary Geiger, who bounced the second and single to right. Perfectly executed push bunt that time by Chuck Schilling. Geiger, a left-hand hitter up there with two outs. Here's Terry Stretch. Fastball hit in the left center field. And here comes Schilling around second. They're going to send him in. He's around third. Here comes the throw in. And the ball game is tied up 1-1 on a long double by Gary Geiger. Two out, the bunt, and then a double, a left center field that caromed off the wall. Geiger scoring Chuck Schilling on that double, and it brings up Carl Yastrzemski, fly to center and hit into a double play. For Geiger, a 60-second run batted in. And for Schilling, the 85th time he scored this year, and he has scored more than any other Red Sox player. Two out. Pitch to Yastrzemski. Curve outside. Ball one. One ball on Yastrzemski. Red Sox fans coming to life. They haven't had much to cheer about. Stretch by Ralph. Fastball low. Ball two. Two and nothing. was Geiger's 21st double of the year. Terry sets. Fastball swung at and missed strike one. Two balls, one strike. Checking the sign from Howard. And then Yastrzemski asks for time at the plate. On deck is Frank Malzone. Now 
Now Terry ready. 2-1 pitch. Low ball three. Three and one. Dagger leading off second. A 3-1 pitch. High fly to deep right field. Blanchard is going back near the Yankee bullpen. He turns under it, makes the catch in deep right field. But the Red Sox come back with one run on two base hits. No Yankee errors. One man left. At the end of six full innings, it's the Yankees one and the Red Sox one. And we pause for station identification. Scoreboard in the American League, Cleveland at Kansas City, Latman against Kraus. Detroit at L.A. hasn't started. Washington at Minnesota, Donovan against Cott. The White Sox lead the Orioles 5-4 at the end of three. Brown relieved Barber and Pierce relieved Harlan. And the National League, Cardinals 2 and the Dodgers nothing at the end of an inning and a half. Koufax against Gibson. Cincinnati 2 and the Giants 1 at the end of three. Sanford against Jay. Chicago at Milwaukee, Cardwell for the Cubs and Spahn going for win number 20 for Milwaukee. The Phillies lead the Pirates 3-2 at the end of six. Mizell replaced Foss and Short replaced Green. Dalrymple home it for the Phillies. For the Yankees, it'll be Cleet Boyer leading off. And then Bob Hale coming out. He'll pinch it for Terry. And Louis Arroyo still loosening up in the Yankee bullpen. It looks like a little left-hander will be coming on for a little more work. Boyer fly to center, bounce to second. On Bouquet ready. Pitch to Cleet. Low ball one. Fastball low outside, ball two. A 1-1 one -one ball game in the top of the seventh. Pitch on the outside corner, strike call, 2-1. Here's the 2-1 delivery. Line drive to center. Geiger coming in fast, makes the catch. Hit it right on the nose, but right at the center field. The one away, and here's Bob Hale, pinch hitting for Ralph Terry. Hale batting 149, one homer, seven runs batted in. This is WOKO, Albany, New York. Left hand hitter. Swings and fouls the first pitch over the roof out of play. Strike one. Billy Gardner on deck. Fastball outside, one and one. Tex Clevenger is now up in the Yankee bullpen. There's another foul back up over the roof out of play. One ball, two strikes. So Arroyo is sat down. Fastball low inside. Two and two. Here's a two-two pitch. Another foul over the roof. Bob swinging a little late at that fastball. One out, nobody on. One one the score. Again, the 2-2 delivery. Ground ball at second base. Chuck Schilling. 
Over to Pete Runnels. That's two away. Brings up Billy Gardner, who beat out an infield single in the fifth inning. Took over for Bobby Richardson. Bobby was 0 for 2 while he was in there. Billy takes a fastball below the knees, ball one. One nothing pitch is swung at and missed strike one, one and one. On deck, Joe DeMastri. Here's a 1 1 pitch. Low ball two, two and one. Ron Burkett ready. Fastball popped in the air. The second baseman, Chuck Schilling, is moving under it. And takes it for the third out. So the Yankees get down in order in the top of the seventh. Nothing across. And at the end of six and a half, it's the Yankees one and the Red Sox one. Atlantic Imperial, the quality gasoline that cleans your carburetor as you drive, is now backed by the clean carburetor test. We're so sure you'll agree that Atlantic Imperial gasoline improves your car's performance that we're inviting you to prove it without risking an extra penny. Here's how Atlantic's clean carburetor test works. Use 100 gallons of Atlantic Imperial and ask for a receipt with each purchase. If you're not completely satisfied that Atlantic Imperial gives you smoother idling, less stalling, and generally improves your car's performance, just mail the receipts to Atlantic. We'll pay the difference between the cost of 100 gallons of Atlantic Imperial and regular gasoline, and that's all there is to it. You'll like the difference Atlantic Imperial makes, or we'll pay the difference. Start using Atlantic Imperial soon. For the Yankees, Louis Arroyo comes on, making his 62nd appearance of the year. Louis is 115 and lost four. Ralph Terry pitched six innings. He allowed just four base hits. Didn't walk anybody. Struck out two and allowed one run. So Terry can either be the winning or losing pitcher. It's Arroyo and Mon Bouquet right now, the pitchers of reckon. And Arroyo will be facing Malzone, Jensen, and Runnels here in the bottom of the seventh. Malzone is singled and popped to second base. Ball game tied 1-1. Al Reniff now up in the Yankee bullpen. By the world already, his first pitch to Malzone. A base hit to left field on the first pitch. Between third and short, Lopez is up with it. Malzone gets his second base hit, the first to Arroyo. Brings up Jackie Jensen. Line deep to center and bounce to third base. Arroyo set. His pitch is taken. Jensen was ready to bump that ball. Ball one. Again, Arroyo says. Jackie bunts a good bunt in front of the plate. Howard must go to first base in time to get Jensen. But Malzone easily goes to second base. He was thrown out. Howard to Scourin. Brings up Pete Runnels. Fly to center, bounce back to the box. Mal 
zone leads off second. The stretch by Arroyo. Fastball hit down the left field line. Lopez going over, can't get it. Maldon's coming on to score, and Reynolds going into second base with a double. And the Red Sox lead two to one. So the Red Sox strategy paid off. After Malzone singles, Jensen sacrificed, and Runnels hit an outside screwball off the left field wall deep in the corner, scoring Malzone. Red Sox lead two to one. Here's Patty Aroni, struck out and popped to short. Runnels at second. The pitch is hit down the left field line, way back there, and this one's off the wall. And Runnels is scoring. And here's the throw to second base. Frankly, only slides, and he's in with a double. Man, that was quick. A single, a sacrifice, and two doubles, and the Red Sox lead three to one. Pumpsy Green, fly to right, bounce to second, batting left-handed. Well, now bat right-handed against Louis Arroyo. Away. Here's the stretch. Pitch to Pumpty. Inside ball one. Louis sets again. Outside ball two. Two or nothing. Pagliaroni at second with one away. Stretch by Arroyo. Pitch is foul. Out of play to the right of the plate. Again, Louis ready. 2-1 pitch. Inside, ball three. Three and one. Here's the stretch. Pitch, swing, and a miss, strike two. Full count on Green, three and two. Pitch is outside, ball four. Green walk. That's the first walk given up by Yankee pitches in this ball game. It'll bring up Mon Bouquet, who hit back to the box and struck out. Red Sox leading 3-1 in the last of the seventh. Scourin in at first, Boyer is in at third. Looking for the possible sacrifice, even though there's one out. Here's a stretch. On Bouquet, bunch down third. Arroyo wheels around, goes to first in time to get Mon Bouquet. It was a nice spot by Mon Bouquet, and that he didn't tip it off. He waited to the last second and then just dropped his bat. And Boyer and Arroyo did not charge in. So the sacrifice works from the pitcher to the third baseman covering. Moving Pagliaroni to third and Green to second, and it brings up Chuck Schilling, who popped to second, popped to third, singled and score. Two out and two on. Luis Pitch is swinging a miss, strike one. Royo comes back with a screwball low, one and one. Now 
the 1-1 one, one pitch. Blue ball fouled and going out of play. Back into the seat. One ball, two strikes. Here's the windup. Pitch inside, two and two. Howard gives the sign. Arroyo nods his head. Here's the two two delivery. Low ball three. Full count. Three and two. Now the payoff pitch. Brown ball to third. Boyers throw in time to get Schilling. But the Red Sox come up with two runs on three hits. No Yankee errors. Two men left. At the end of seven full innings, it's the Red Sox three and the Yankees one. You know, now is the time to start thinking about home heat. You know, a quick phone call tomorrow can bring you triple refined Atlantic heating oil, the best for clean, modern heat. Atlantic's exclusive triple refining process gives you a clear, transparent, clean burning fuel. And Atlantic makes sure that you don't run out. Deliveries are automatic, depending on the daily weather and your family's needs. Take a minute. Call your local Atlantic distributor to order low-cost, triple-refined Atlantic heating oil. Cardinals 2, the Dodgers nothing at the end of two and a half. San Francisco, Cincinnati. Jim Davenport is just homing in the fourth with two on, and it gives the Giants a 4-2 to two lead playing the top of the fourth. Chicago at Milwaukee just getting underway, and the Pirates lead the Phillies 4-3 to three at the end of 7. So they're still having a battle over in that National League. For the Yankees, Joe DeMastri will lead off. He'll be followed by Roger Maris and then Johnny Blanchard. The Yankees trail 3-1 to one in the top of the 8th inning. Demastri struck out in his only time at bat. He took over for Kubek, who was 0 for 2. Tony had bounced to short and flied to center. Bill Monbuquet on the mound. Pitch to Demastri is over. Strike one call. Another curve, this one low, one on one. The pitch is low and away, ball two, two and one. There's a swing and a miss, strike two. Fastball foul back off the screen. Two and two the count. Two-two pitch, pop foul, and coming back out of play. Again, the two-two delivery. Swing and a miss, strike three. Maestri goes down and strikes. For the second time, that's the fifth strikeout for Monboquet, and here's Roger Maris, who has walked, fly to center, and singled. Still looking for home run number 60. On 
deck, Johnny Blanchard. Pitch to Maris is a curve over strike one call. Red Sox leading 3-1 in the top of the eighth. Fastball fouled out of play down the left field line. Nothing in two on Maris. Now the two strike pitch. Outside, ball one. Two strikes on Maris. Here's the pitch. A high fly down the right field line, but curving foul. Back into the seat. Still one and two on Maris. Pitch is hit in the air to left field. Back there, Yastrzemski going back. He's under it, though, and makes the catch. Yastrzemski thought it was three out and started running in. It's two away. And it brings up Johnny Blanchard, up for the first time in this ball game. gets a hand as he comes to the Yankee dugout. Blanchard batting an even 300. Nine doubles, one triple, 20 homers, and 49 runs batted in. Pitch to Blanchard. A foul is coming back in the seats out of play. Just fighting for that ball. Well, they won't give up on it. There's about five of them. Look at them. Still battling for that ball. Pitch to Blanchard outside. One on one. Two out now with nobody on. They haven't come up there yet. Low curve outside, ball two, two and one. There's about five of them down there. Each have a hand on the ball. Pitch is over, strike two. Two and two. And it is raining right now. Bill Kane felt that rain about three innings ago. Should have been an Indian scout. Curve hit on the ground in the hole, chilling to his left. Can't get it. Went right under his glove out in the right field. It's a base hit for Blanchard. And it keeps Johnny over that 300 mark. That's the fifth hit for the Yankees. Brings up Hector Lopez, reached on an error in the sixth inning. Hector batting in Yogi Berra's spot in the lineup. Two out, the pitch to Lopez, curve high, ball one. Red Sox three and the Yankees one here in the top of the eighth inning. Last ball is over. Strike one, one on one. 
Pritchard leading off first. Curve over strike two. One ball, two strikes. Here's a stretch. High foul down the right field line, drifting out of play. One ball, two strikes, and two outs. Even the pigeons are flying low in this weather up there. Look at them. <laughs> the pitch popped in the air, and back of first base, Ronald's going back. He's in foul territory, under it, and makes the catch right against the tarpaulin. So for the Yankees in the top of the eighth, no runs, one hit. No Red Sox there is one man left. And at the end of seven and a half innings, it's the Red Sox three and the Yankees one. Today, more and more motorists are enjoying better engine performance thanks to Atlantic Imperial gasoline. But now you can try Atlantic Imperial in your own car without risking an extra penny. How? Well, with Atlantic's 100-gallon clean carburetor test. Every time you buy Atlantic Imperial, get a receipt from your dealer. Then after 100 gallons, if you're not satisfied with generally better engine performance, return those receipts to Atlantic. They'll send you the difference in cost between 100 gallons of Atlantic Imperial and regular gasoline. No questions asked. Start using Atlantic Imperial today. Pause for station identification. Serving the Tri Cities of Albany, Schenectady, and Troy with good sound broadcasting for 1961, this is Quality Modern, WOKO, Albany, New York, where you always hear the very best of everything. Your Yankee baseball station. The time, two minutes before 4 p.m. Renoff is making his 23rd appearance of the year. He's 1 2 and lost none. Six feet tall, 195 pounds. Has been a good spot man in relief for the Yankees this year. He'll be pitching to Geiger, Yastrzemski, and Malzone here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Gary Geiger, bounced to second, single to right, double to left center, is driven in one run. All right, Hal Renafredi, a Royal pitch just one inning, gave up three hits and two runs. Arroyo is the pitcher of record for the Yankees right now. There's a line drive to right field. Blanchett coming in and makes the catch. Johnny had started back a step and then came charging in and made a nice play of the line drive. One away. Brings up Yastrzemski. Fly to center. Hit into a double play. Fly to right. Pitch to Yastrzemski inside, ball one. The official paid attendance today, 30,802. Curve over, strike one, one and one. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Change up high and away. Ball two. Two and one.
swing and a miss, strike two at a low fastball. Roland Sheldon is up in the Yankee bullpen. Cisco and Brewer are up in the Red Sox bullpen. There's a curve in the dirt, rolls back to the screen. Full count on Yastrzemski. Three and two with one out, nobody on, and the Red Sox leading 3-1 in the last of the eighth. Holy cow, the Giants came up with nine runs in the top of the fourth inning and lead Cincinnati 10-2. Davenport hit a homer with two on and Cepeda with the bases loaded. But the Cardinals are leading the Dodgers 4-0 now at the end of three innings. Yastrzemski fouls the next pitch off count holds at 3-2. and two. I tell you, both those teams are playing the ball game and with one eye on the scoreboard. The Dodgers are watching the scoreboard to see what the uh, Reds are doing, and the Reds are seeing what the Dodgers are doing. Magic number is three for Cincinnati. Again, the 3-2 pitch. It's low, gets away from Howard, but it's ball four. First walk given up by Renner. Brings up Malzone, who's two for three. Two singles and popped to second base. He scored once. One out. Runner at first. Ren up sets. Pitch is outside and low ball one. One nothing pitch. A ground ball is short. Demestri flips to Gardner back to first double play. Short to second to first. For the Red Sox, nothing across in the bottom of the eighth, and the score now at the end of eight full innings. The Red Sox three, and the Yankees one. Now the double play by the Yankees is second in the ballgame. Gives them a total of 178 on the year, leading the major leagues in that department. On the scoreboard in the American League, Cleveland is at Kansas City. And at the end of an inning and a half, it's Cleveland one, Kansas City nothing. A young fan has run out in the field, shook hands with Frank Malzone. Now he's going to shake hands with Yastrzemski. One policeman chasing him, and he's not going to get him. They'll need a little more help to get this kid. He's running past third base, coming in towards the plate. And he taps Pagliaroni, hops the fence, and he got away, and he gets a big hand. Now he's running upstairs. And the fans are getting on the officer who's doing his job. But he's not in shape to chase a kid like that. The kid was only about 11 or 12. He's looking for him. The youngster ran upstairs. And the fans are telling me he ran the other way. Washington nothing, Minnesota nothing at the end of two, and the White Sox lead Baltimore 8 4 at the end of five. And there goes a couple more on the field, and that's all it takes one kid to start it. But well, now we're going to have some reinforcements out to chase them. The Cardinals lead the Dodgers 4 0 at the end of three, and the Giants are leading Cincinnati 10 2 at the end of three and a half. Chicago nothing, Milwaukee batting in the bottom of the first, and Pittsburgh leads the Phillies 4-3 at the end of eight. Oh, these kids are going to be surrounded now. And they're not going to get away. There they head out to left field now. And one kid cutting across towards first. He's dodging one policeman, and he gets away. 
They're not trying too hard, though, to catch him. And let's see. One of them got away and one got caught. got a ball game to play here and a plane to catch for the Yankees it'll be Howard Scarron and Boyer to face Mon Boquette with the Red Sox leading 3-1 in the top of the ninth Single fly to center and struck out. Now we're ready to go. Pitch to Howard is a foul back out of play, strike one. Another foul out of play. Strike two, nothing in two. Here's the two strike pitch. A ground ball to the second baseman, Schilling, over to Runnels, and it's one away. Bounce to third, homered, and pop to third. Moose has accounted for the only Yankee run. He pops it up in back of the plate. Pagliaroni coming back near the screen, and it hits just on the screen. And stays up on the screen. Little girl down there, must be about seven or eight, hopped the fence. She was ready to run out and get that ball. She was in that scramble for the foul before. One strike on the moose. Pitch is another foul back off the screen. Nothing in two. Here's a two-strike pitch. High ball one. Curve ball swung and missed strike three. Six strikeouts for Mon Bouquet. Two out. And the batter Cleet Boyer. Boyer fly to center, bounce to second, and line to center field. And Tom Tresh is coming on deck to pinch hit if Boyer gets on. Two out, nobody on. The Red Sox lead 3-1. Pitch to Boyer is over strike one call. Fastball outside, one on one. Mon Bouquet ready. Curve over, strike two called. One ball, two strikes.
pitch is fouled off the screen just as the youngster ran out in the field. And another one, and another one, and another one. Four in a row, shaking hands with Jensen, and then going back. And they're hopping the fence. They all got back in. One ball, two strikes on Cleet Boyer. Here's the pitch. Curve hit on the ground to third. Malzone on the big hop. Goes to Runnels. The ball game is over. Nothing across for the Yankees in the top of the ninth, and the Red Sox win it 3-1. Right now, how about last... We'll have the totals for you in just a moment. Fans, when you're on the go, try Atlantic Imperial and the clean carburetor test. Ball game for the Red Sox, three runs, seven hits, one error, four men left. For the Yankees, one run, five hits, no errors, and seven men left. The winning pitcher, Mon Bouquet, he's 114, lost 13. The loser, Louis Arroyo, in relief, he's 115 and lost five. Well, that winds up another Atlantic baseball broadcast. Tune in for more baseball listening Tuesday night when the Yankees meet Baltimore. Now, this is Bob Delaney saying that's all for now from P. Valentine and Sons, brewers of the crisp refresher Valentine Beer, and the Atlantic Refining Company and your Atlantic dealer who offer you Atlantic Imperial, the gasoline that cleans your carburetor and keeps it clean. The Red Sox win 3-1 to one over the Yankees, and Roger Maris is blanked again. Moose Gowron got the Yankee only run with a homer. This is the Home of Champions Network.